Well, hello and welcome to this English lesson about describing things you buy. You can't really go through life without buying things. So, there's probably things that you've bought that you already own or things that you want to buy or are going to buy and it's nice to be able to describe those things. There's a variety of words in English that we use to describe the things we buy. Um sometimes used to express what we think about it before we buy it, the reason we want to buy it or to describe it after we bought it. Some of these words will be very positive. Some will be a little bit negative but once again, welcome to this English lesson where we're going to learn to describe the things that we've bought or the things that we're going to buy. Premium. So, when I buy gas, I buy regular gas. So, if you look here, there are three different types of gas. There's regular and there's plus and there's premium. Premium is a word we use to describe something that we buy that's of very high quality. If you buy cheese, you can buy buy premium cheese. It's the best cheese. Maybe it's been aged for three years instead of one year. When you buy gas in Canada, you can buy premium. There's other words too when you buy gas. You can buy plus and super and super plus. We have a lot of different words. Um Bob generally buys regular though um because he just drives normal vans. I don't drive a sports car. Um and by the way, the prices there are not the Canadian prices unless you put a one in front. Like a dollar fifty four a liter would be right. I think this might be American pricing. I'm not sure but premium. A way to describe something that is very high quality. Which is the next word? When you buy something that's high quality, it's made really well. They've used the best materials when they've made it and they've really made sure when they make it that they take their time and do it properly. If you've ever bought a high quality belt, it lasts for years. When you buy a high quality belt, the buckle on the belt is very very well made. When you buy a high quality belt, they use the best materials, the best leather or any other material that they're using. So, high quality simply means the best material and they were very careful and worked cautiously. No, not cautiously. They worked carefully and with a lot of care when they put it together which is the opposite of low quality. I'm sure you've bought something before that's low quality. If you buy low quality jewelry, sometimes it breaks really easily. Sometimes the clasp on the necklace will stop working. The clasp is where it connects together on the back. If you buy a low quality belt, sometimes the buckle breaks or maybe some of the thread starts to come out. So, high quality, well made, good materials, low quality, just not made well at all and very low quality materials as well. We also use the phrase well made. In Canada, it's well known that Japanese cars are well made. A lot of the cars in Canada that are imports, the cars that come from other countries are very well made. American cars are well made as well but there was a time when people really liked to buy Honda cars in particular. They still do by the way or Toyota cars because they're very well made. At the factory, the people who are building the car have very high standards. They always do a good job when they're building the car and so when the car is finished, it's considered to be well made. When people buy a car like that, it lasts a very long time and doesn't need to be fixed very often. So, a well-made car is just put together with care. When the people are building it at the factory, they do a really good job and they always use parts when they build the car that are well-made as well. Poorly made. So, I apologize to anyone who is from America. This is an American car. This is a poorly made car or was known to be poorly made. It had some design flaws. One of the problems with this car is that it very easily, if it got in an accident, um bad things could happen. It wasn't very uh well made. So, we would say it was poorly made. I believe this is a Pinto but I'm not 100% sure. So, a poorly made car, the design itself is bad 
perhaps the way it was put together is bad and the materials that were used were bad as well. Poorly made. And then sometimes we just in English say something is junk. So, junk is usually used to refer to things you don't want anymore. Um so, you throw so, trash, garbage, junk. We use those words somewhat interchangeably but we also sometimes will just say, oh, I bought a new purse and the strap is already getting frayed. You see how it's getting frayed? Someone might say, ah, it's just junk or they might say it's a piece of junk. So, it's another way to describe something that's poorly made. You might just call it junk or you might call it a piece of junk. I in the past have bought many things where I'm like, ah, this bike is just junk or I did have a belt once that was just junk, a piece of junk. Work of art. So, art is something beautiful that people make. A painting or a sculpture. A work of art can be a painting or sculpture as well but sometimes you will want to buy something like an iMac Uh, which is just so well designed and looks so nice that you would say it's a work of art. Have you seen the new iMac? Oh, it's a work of art. It means that you like the way it's designed. You like the curves and the edges and how it looks and the metal and plastic that they use to build it. So, if you ever buy something that's just beautiful as well as functional, you would maybe describe it as a work of art. Flawless. So, flawless is often used to describe something like a pearl or a diamond but it can be used to describe many things. It means that it has no flaws. So, there's no imperfections. So, a flawless pearl, there's no like it's perfectly round. It doesn't have any marks on it. There's no small holes. It's not misshapen. It's a perfect sphere. So, you would say it's flawless. I used a lot of words there. You might have to rewind and listen to that part again but when something is flawless, it means there's no mistakes. There's no flaws. Um there's no blemishes. There's another word for you and often used to describe something like you know if a diamond is cut perfectly, it's a flawless diamond or if you buy a perfectly spherical pearl you might say that it is flawless and then we have handcrafted. So, handcrafted is used to refer to anything that is made by hand that is made with someone's hands instead of a machine. So, when something is handcrafted, someone took the time to make it with their hands. Jen sells bouquets and we call them handcrafted bouquets. She puts them together one stem at a time. She doesn't put all the flowers in a machine and a bouquet comes out the other end. Every bouquet is handcrafted. So, it also communicates to someone that each one is unique. A machine makes perfect copies when it makes something but when something is handcrafted, each item the person makes usually is a little different than the one before. So, it's handcrafted. Perfect. So, perfect is used to describe again something that has no flaws or even that looks beautiful. Often, a bride will describe their wedding dress by saying it's perfect or someone will say, did you see her dress? It was perfect. So, it just means something that's really well made. Something that was made with great care. Um something that's good for the situation as well. So, if I bought a bike because I was going on a long bike ride, someone could say, how was the bike? And I could say, oh, it was perfect. It was exactly the right bike for the trip that I went on. So, when something's perfect, It's just awesome in every way. So, there's three words I'm going to teach together here. Inferior, superior and extraordinary and I'm going to use my the three kinds of ice cream we buy. You'll notice there's French on some of these because in Canada, sometimes both languages or both languages are always on everything but when I buy this brand of ice cream, hopefully, the company that makes it doesn't doesn't watch this video. I feel like it's inferior. I'm comparing it to this kind of ice cream which is better. It's superior and this kind of ice cream which is extraordinary. So, inferior means low quality. 
the ingredients aren't the best ingredients. It, in fact, this ice cream has fewer ingredients, the extraordinary. Um, it just has cream and sugar and a couple other things in it. But this one has a lot of ingredients. It tastes okay. It's not amazing. Um, in English, we might say um, it hits the spot. Like if it's a hot day and you want ice cream, I will eat this kind with some chocolate sauce on it. But it's not as good as the other two. It's an inferior product. This is a superior product to this. Definitely. This is really good ice cream. In fact, yesterday at the market, there's a shop, an ice cream shop that sells this ice cream and I had two scoops of mint chocolate chip. It was tasty. This ice cream though is amazing. It's the best ice cream that I can buy. Um it's also a little bit expensive but it is made with the best ingredients. It's made with high quality cream. Um it's made with a recipe from 50 years ago where it's just a simple awesome uh, ice cream. So, three different words. Inferior, not as good. Superior, better. And extraordinary, like the best. This is an extraordinary ice cream. You know, sometimes in English, we will overpronounce this word. We'll say something like, oh, it's extraordinary. But the fast way to say it is extraordinary. It's extraordinary. But sometimes just to be fun, we will say extraordinary. Maybe just Bob says that. Run of the mill. So, when something is run of the mill, it's just normal. Maybe you went to a restaurant and you had green beans and someone says, oh, did you have those new green beans? Those new amazing ones, the new variety. You can say, no, it was just a run of the mill green bean. So, it just means you had an ordinary bean. There was nothing special about it. Um when we buy strawberries, we just buy run of the mill strawberries. When I buy um let me see. I'm trying to think of another example. I'll leave it with those but basically run of the mill simply means ordinary. Nothing special about it. And then we just have the word ordinary. So, when you buy a car, if you buy you know just a simple four-door car with nothing extra, it doesn't have a bigger engine, it doesn't have big 17-inch wheels like There are a lot of extra things you can put on a car but sometimes you just need an ordinary car, a normal car, an average car. So, to me, this is just an ordinary car right now. It's a little newer than what I would own but when I go for a walk, there's a lot of very ordinary cars on the road. Just simple four-door car uh, used to get people where they need to go um, to get them to work or get them to school commonplace. So, I just realized this is a lesson where I'm trying to talk about things you buy and nobody buys dandelion. So, this is a bad picture but it is good for the word commonplace. If someone said, do you have dandelions? That's what this type of flower or it's actually a weed. If someone said, do you have dandelions in Canada? I would say, oh, they're commonplace. This simply means they're everywhere. When I look out the window, I can see dandelions. When I drive to work, I see dandelions. When I get to work, the lawn has dandelions in it. So, they are commonplace. If you were to ask something, I'm trying to think of something you buy. Oh, if someone said, are, do people eat breakfast cereal in Canada? You would say, oh yeah, breakfast cereals are commonplace. There's a whole aisle of breakfast cereal in the grocery store, in my grocery store. So, when something is commonplace, It means it is everywhere. Grade A. So, there's a number of different ways to specify quality. Sometimes things are rated grade A. Sometimes they're graded triple A. Um when you buy things like vegetables, you can buy grade A vegetables. That means when they harvested the vegetables, they took the best vegetables and said, these are the best and they put them in one spot and then there's less good vegetables that go in other spots. So, grade A simply means the best. So, in any kind of sorting process, we often use this for meat as well. Grade A or triple A uh, grade meat. So, lackluster. So, this is now more negative. 
when something is lackluster, it's it's less than ordinary. Um it there's nothing really that exciting about it. So, you might buy a watch and this watch has a simple black band, a simple white face and it tells the time but it doesn't tell you the month. It doesn't tell you anything else. It's a very um I'm trying to think of another word for it. Like it's a the base model. There's nothing exceptional about it. So, we would say it's lackluster. So, my son bought a watch. I'll show you what watch he bought in a little bit and it's kind of fancier. So, this would be just a plain watch. Um a normal watch and then not nothing exciting about it. You wouldn't see someone wearing this watch and then go home and tell someone, oh, you should have seen my boss's new watch. If your boss bought this watch, you probably wouldn't even notice it. Garden variety. So, this is another phrase we use to describe something that's ordinary or normal. So, if you get the flu or if you get COVID, if you have the flu, let me back up. If you were sick and someone said, oh, you have the flu. Do you have COVID? You might say, no, I just have a garden variety flu. Garden variety means like just the normal flu. Oh, do you have pneumonia. No, I just have a garden variety cold. So, I have the normal cold. So, it just refers to something that is ordinary or normal. So, it was kind of funny because I made this lesson and then last night at market, I was talking to the vendor beside me and he said, well, you know, you get what you pay for and I thought, oh, I I, I should go home and put that phrase in this lesson. In English, when someone says, you get what you pay for, they usually mean that you have something that isn't working right but you bought something cheap. So, if I was to buy a really cheap car and it broke a day later, my brother might say, well, you get what you pay for. If I was to buy cookies and those cookies were half the price of all the other cookies in the store and if I took a bite and I was like, oh, this does not taste good. Jen can say, well, you get what you pay for. Basically, it's kind of a saying saying, well, you didn't pay enough for that. So, why are you surprised that it broke or doesn't taste good or whatever? So, you get what you pay for. So, we have a couple of phrases to talk about things that are kind of ordinary. I've gone over a few already but one would be plain vanilla. Or even just vanilla. Vanilla is a flavor but we also use it to describe the ordinary version of something. If I bought a new minivan, there are three different options. The bottom option, the cheapest option, I might just call it plain vanilla. It doesn't mean the van is white. All it means is that if I was to buy the $30,000 van or the $40,000 van or the $50,000 van, I would describe the cheapest option as plain vanilla. It doesn't have any of the extras. It's just the normal version. I bought a new phone. There are three versions of this phone. A Pixel 7a, a Pixel 7 and a Pixel 7 Pro. I just bought the plain vanilla Pixel 7a. I didn't spend extra money for the Pixel 7 or the Pixel 7 Pro. Okay? So, it's just another way to describe Usually, if there's more than one option, the lowest option available to you. Top notch. So, I think I've taught this word before in another lesson. When something is top notch, it is the best or at least one of the best. Um my mother-in-law makes really good pie. It's top notch. That means that when I think about all of the different pie I've eaten in my life, Hers is really, really well made. I really like it. It is top notch. When I talked about ice cream, the ice cream that I described as extraordinary, I could also say is top notch. Oh, that ice cream is top notch. I love it. It is some of the best ice cream. Professional. So, sometimes we say professional grade. Sometimes we say it's the professional series. When they make certain things, they make it They make certain things for normal people 
and then for people who do that as a job. So, something like tools. This is a great example. You can go and buy ordinary tools but you can also buy professional grade tools. They're more expensive but they they just last longer. They do a better job. So, if you and you don't have to be a a professional to buy professional grade tools. It's just a way to describe them. So, when I buy tools, I usually spend a little more money to buy professional grade tools or professional tools because they last longer on the farm. They work better. Cream of the crop. So, cream of the crop is used to describe the best of anything. It doesn't have to be fruit. It can be almost anything. But when you buy apples, if you buy the cream of the crop, it means you're buying the best apples. No bruises, no blemishes, um perfectly ripe. The cream of the crop. So, if they harvest a hundred apples and ten apples are perfect, we would call those ten apples the cream of the crop. Bestseller. Sometimes you go and you buy a book and you buy a bestseller. Sometimes an author is referred to as a bestselling author. So, if you buy a new book and someone says, hey, is it a good book? You could say, yeah, did you know it's a bestseller? Um which basically means they sold a lot of copies of that book. Award winning. So, in Canada, I'm sure in many other places in the world, there are cooking competitions. Two that come to mind are sometimes there's a chili cook-off where people go and make chili. Chili is something that's made with beans and hamburger and vegetables. If it's vegetarian chili, it it obviously doesn't have hamburger in it. But sometimes um you go to a restaurant and they serve an award winning chili or an award winning soup or an award winning bread. It means that they won an award somewhere. It means that you can buy award winning wine in my area. Wine that's really good and it won an award from some sort of award giving organization. But if something is award winning, it means that at some point in time, they won an award, a medal or a trophy because it was so good. Top of the line. I don't always buy top of the line computers. My computer over there, where do I click here? My computer right here. Oh, it's kind of hard to see. It's it, it was a top of the line computer four years ago and I probably should replace it next year but top of the line means the best. So, if there were ten different computers that I could buy, if you buy the one that's the most expensive, you would say it's top of the line. I didn't actually buy the most expensive computer though but anyways, it still was a really good computer. In my mind, it was top of the line. It was the best computer. It's getting a little old now though. Lit. So, this is a newer word. Uh this is the watch that my son bought um which is definitely not ordinary. It's pretty cool looking. It's white. It has a really cool face. It has a neat name, G-Shock. And a word that has begun I think I started hearing it three years ago is lit. Younger people use this word like, oh, that watch is lit. It means cool. It means awesome. It means amazing. Um, let's get the official definition of lit. Meaning of lit. I wonder if it's even in the dictionary yet. We'll find out in a sec. Meaning of lit. Is my internet not working? Hmm. I should check to make sure the live stream is still working. Huh. I think everything's working. We'll see in a moment. Meaning of lit. Let's see. I don't even know if this definition is here. Very good, impressive, or exciting. Yes, the party was lit. So, there you go. Lit. Amazing, exciting, cool, awesome, really nice. Durable. In my in my video um a couple weeks ago, I was wearing jeans and I said I like wearing jeans because they're tough. They're durable. They don't rip easily. It's a good thing to wear on a farm. I don't roll up my um pant legs like that though. And I don't have nice shoes like that. This guy is stylish. Anyways, jeans are very durable. 
It's a very tough material. It doesn't get wrecked easily. It doesn't rip easily. So, jeans, very, very nice. High end. I cannot afford this but this is high end sound equipment. So, high end refers to very expensive, very well made, all the best materials and components. Some people love sound equipment and they buy high end speakers, loudspeakers. They buy high end sound equipment. So, it means of the best quality, like super, super high quality, high end. I would love to own sound equipment like this. When I listen to music, it would sound amazing. So, definitely a uh, high end. So, I'm gonna look at four things to end. Brand new, like new, used, and refurbished. So, this is how we describe things that we buy. I bought a brand new phone. It simply means that no one owned this phone before me. They made this phone at the phone factory and they put it in a box and then eventually I bought it and they sent it to me. It is brand new. No previous owner. No one owned this before me. Like new means that someone owned it before you but they took really good care of it and you're buying it used but there's no scratches. You wouldn't even know it was used. It was so well taken care of. So, it's like new. Sometimes when you buy a phone, you don't wanna buy a brand new phone. So, you go to a store and you buy one that's like new. So, it is used but it's so um it was so well taken care of, you think it's new still. And used is just simply a general term for anything that was owned before. You can buy used clothing, you can buy a used car, uh, you can buy a used bike. Um, if someone was to buy a motorcycle, you could say, oh, did you buy it new or used? Oh, I bought it used. I can't afford a new one. So, used simply means that someone owned it before you. Refurbished refers to something that was previously owned and it's used but someone made sure it's working well. We usually use this to talk about computers and phones or printers, usually electronics. Like, oh, did you buy a new printer? Uh, no, I bought a refurbished printer. That means it was used but someone who is an expert at printer maintenance, hello fly, made sure that it's working well. They cleaned it. They replaced the toner. Um, it looks new almost. Um, a refurbished computer is a computer where maybe they clean the screen, replace the battery, they made sure it's working and in proper order. So, it is refurbished. So, it's used but an expert has made sure that it's working properly again. 